What's up, everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day so far today. If you've got a keen eye, I bet you can see exactly what is happening in the crypto market. The SEC chair, Gary Gensler, is not providing clarity on the crypto market as he continues to pursue regulation by enforcement. Besides mentioning that Bitcoin is a commodity, he seems pretty reluctant to discuss the position of other crypto assets. In his statement, he was keen to clarify that Bitcoin is the only asset he will discuss. All in all, currently, the SEC is collaborating with other federal regulators to oversee the crypto sector, including the CFTC and banking regulators. Gensler, in an interview with CNBC, emphasized that many crypto tokens are currently trying to operate in a non-compliant way. He went ahead to say that there's a lot of work to be done to protect the investing public. In fact, Gensler said that thousands of crypto tokens currently do not comply with the laws. And I think this is actually the reason why this Ripple versus SEC lawsuit is a crucial part of history in the making. Well, let's hear attorney John Deaton's thoughts on the current legal framework. Yesterday or this week, Gary Gensler, he made some comments uh, and some aren't sure where he's putting Bitcoin, for instance. Uh, did he say Bitcoin was a commodity? Is it a security? And where does that leave the rest of these cryptos? Well, Charles, thank you for having me. Yeah. Gary Gensler came out and finally, after a year, finally said that Bitcoin is a commodity, but it took him a year to do it. And he didn't comment on any of the other cryptocurrencies. And there's a specific reason for that. He prefers there to be vagueness and regulatory uncertainty, because when there's regulatory uncertainty, it allows him prosecutorial options, right? Because- That gray area. That gray area. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> I'm on the security side, believe me. When I first got into business, I found out about the gray area the hard way. Uh, because they're, you know, particularly small, young, and, you know, and, and coming into the business, you start a business and, and the Wall Street side, there's no, like you said, there's no clear lanes, but they do this deliberately. You think he's, they, they deliberately leave these gray areas? Oh, absolutely. There? Because if you provide guidelines, what do entrepreneurs and companies do, Charles? They meet those guidelines. When you keep it uncertain, it gives you options for him to continue to engage in regulation by an, uh, in, enforcement, right? right? That's how he's doing it. I've went on record to say that, to predict that he's going to sue an exchange or two by the end of this year and claim that they're selling unregistered securities other than Bitcoin, but he won't tell you which ones are securities. Right, right. You know, that's the problem. Right, right. And it's hard to be ignorant of a law that if the law doesn't exist. Exactly. <laughs> it's no, like, absolutely. It's one thing to say, okay, I didn't know and it was on the books, but you're, you know, I, it's, it's really despicable. It's disgusting, really? is, is what it is. He keeps going on record to saying these exchanges are selling securities. And then you ask, well, which ones? And he won't say, because now we know from his comment that you just asked me about, he's gonna go with, they're all securities except for Bitcoin, which makes this Ripple XRP case extremely. As always, welcome back to Money Side, your favorite crypto news channel. If you're new here, welcome to the XRP Army. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our daily crypto news updates. Moving on from the SEC saga, we have some pretty exciting news on Twitter shared by XRP Captain. He says U.S. residents can now buy Ripple's XRP using credit cards and Apple Pay. Following up on that, we can see that this initiative has been set in place to enable U.S. residents, except those living in Hawaii and New York, to make direct purchases of XRP, the seventh largest crypto by market capitalization. This is another massive win for the XRP community, as this gives more people, including U.S. residents, once again, access to digital assets. Just to take you back a little bit, most U.S.-based crypto exchanges were forced to discontinue their XRP support on the respective trading platforms following the SEC lawsuit against Ripple. Unfortunately, the lack of U.S.-based crypto exchanges supporting XRP has caused massive damage to the coin over the last two years. The crypto asset is down more than 50% since Ripple was slammed with the SEC lawsuit. We can only hope that now that XRP is accessible to U.S. residents, this might positively impact the price of XRP going forward. On the other hand, things are getting more heated in the crypto industry as we can now see a new lawsuit alleging that Solana is a security. This is yet another lawsuit that will potentially have such a massive implication on the crypto investment landscape. This is another proof that the crypto realm actually really needs clarity. We need to know which crypto assets are securities 
and which ones are not to be able to make sound, long-term investment decisions. And since the SEC doesn't seem to offer any credible guidance on the crypto industry, most of these crypto assets might end up being categorized as securities at the end of it all. At this rate, we really need some basic level of scrutiny and regulation in the crypto industry. Otherwise, it will be best if we just brace ourselves for a massive impact across the crypto space, as in the coming days, we are likely to see many more lawsuits being dished out by the SEC. We are heading into some very crazy times, and XRP might be the only crypto asset with some form of clarity if the SEC lawsuit comes to an end. With that said, let's listen to some pretty interesting comments from BitBoy Crypto. Boom! Citibank will use XRP token to facilitate international payments. In a small excerpt from the Citibank document attached to the tweet read, Banks initially viewed Ripple as a competitor, though increasingly banks are partnering with Ripple. Mic drop. Goldman Sachs is on board with this idea as well. They submitted patents to use XRP and Bitcoin to validate nodes months ago. Honestly, this is why the SEC went after Ripple in the first place. They thought if they could win against a company that works with the banks, that precedent would make it a walk in the park to win against the companies that don't. The SEC is supposed to protect the investors, but who's going to protect investors from the SEC? With such news, the future looks pretty promising for Ripple and XRP. In fact, if we were to get a summary judgment on the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit, we can lock in up to five-digit price on the XRP asset. What I'll say is, woe unto anyone who's not prepared for what awaits us ahead. Mainly, if SWIFT adopts the XRP ledger, we will witness massive movement in the markets. SWIFT will implement ISO 20022 in November of this year. But there's a good chance that even after the implementation, the XRP price won't moon until we have clarity on the SEC lawsuit. But on a good note, this allows us enough time to load up on some XRPs before we start seeing some action. Now listen to this, and let me know in the comment section below what you think. Ripple turned down a settlement from the SEC. They turned it down. They said no. They are so confident, the Ripple team, is so confident that they are going to outright win this trial that they turn down an official settlement offer from the SEC. And, and, and when you start to realize that, when you start to think about it, suddenly things start making so much sense. And now when you start thinking about this whole Ripple versus SEC lawsuit with a fresh set of eyes, you can see that everything has been well planned out all along. Let's say if Ripple agreed to a settlement by the end of last year, well, XRP would have still caught up to the bull run and it would have a run for a bit. The unfortunate part is that the run wouldn't last for long as the bear market was in by the start of this year. Now, if you think about it, the most ideal time to see a settlement for the Ripple lawsuit could be next year. And why do I say this? We still haven't seen a bottom for Bitcoin. The market is set to go lower over the next couple of months before we'll witness any real recovery. Looking at the lawsuit, we can all agree that this is no longer heading in the direction of a settlement. But correct me if I'm wrong, but what I think is that Ripple is about to absolutely destroy the SEC. With each passing month, the SEC is looking pretty bad as they keep getting exposed for their corruption. The kind of confidence Ripple wields comes from knowing they have the SEC dead to rights. As always, do your own research and always trade safely, guys. Please keep in mind we're not a licensed financial advisor. All videos on this channel are intended for entertainment purposes only. You can always let us know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please click on that subscribe button below. And turn on notifications so you get informed whenever we post our amazing content. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next Money Side.